So as you've been making your Minecraft maps, you might have noticed that you can only have so many brushes in a single map. And so making a map like so, it's kind of impossible. There's too many brushes. This is the infamous uh, Breeze Island map that I've been trying to port over, but there is a lot of work to be done. Um, and if you were to compile this, it would give you a big error after a long time of compiling, and you wouldn't even come out with a finished map. The reason being is because uh, Hammer actually has a limit to how much, how many brushes it can have. 8,192 8, brushes total can exist. And you can't just like make one big brush and cut it a whole bunch of times because there can only be a maximum of 128 faces on a single brush. This is so that the game can actually run and your computer isn't like crapping out and trying to load so many thousands of brushes. And a map like this would have a total of almost 16,000 brushes. So that is well over double the amount um, that I could have on a single given map. Um, so what do we do about this? I still want to play on this map, but I can't. There's a tool called Proper that allows us to recreate certain brushes and make them into a model. Um, I have made a tree, for example, and these are all trees. Of course, I'm having to I'm removing them one by one eventually. Um, and in the meantime, I'm kind of making a miniature version of this with trees, and so. What we're going to do today is we're going to try to figure out how to make a model out of a out of out of uh, some brushes. All right, so the files that we have um, that I'm going to be linking you guys is uh, these two files right here. This is important. Um, these two files are going to be in the zip file, and just what we need to do is this is the file that's going to allow us to add a property to a model within Hammer. And this is the file that's going to create that brush, if you will, oh, sorry, allows us to add properties to a brush because we're, we're going to make the model an entity or make the brush an entity before it becomes a model, if that makes any sense. And this will be the program that, that does that within Hammer. So first off, um, we need to set up uh, Hammer. So with this, you're going to want to put this in your Uh, source SDK directory. Now, another thing before we do this, you are going to need the old source SDK to perform this um, proper trick. So, in order to install that, you simply would just go to open up Steam, go to your library, go to tools, look for source SDK. It would be down here somewhere, um, but just install source SDK and once, it is, once it's installed, it should be in your directory right here. Um, so once you have it installed, be sure to... Uh, we need to install this proper thing. So, so source SDK. Oh, my arm's going off. Source SDK, bin, and then we go to source 2007, and bin one more time, and in here <coughs> is where we're going to we're dragging these two into here. Boop. Drop them there. They'll be there. So we're going to leave them here. And if we go back to the hammer that we're using to map, we're going to go to Tools, Options. You should already have all this set up um, by following my previous video. So I'll put a link here. And we're also going to add that proper um, FGD that we have. Now, you don't want to go to the desktop. You want to look go to where we just dropped it in so we go to steam apps common source sdk and then bin source that in seven bin and proper here it is it's going to add that in should be the only change we need to make now we want to reload Reload hammer. Now that we've added that. And what you want to do now is find out what model you want to pull out. Now, um, in this example, I'm just going to be doing it with a tree, but uh, technically, this 
technique has infinite possibilities. If you look at that map, um, that, what was it, TTT Sky Island or something like that, their entire islands were made of models. So potentially what I could do is I could make this whole section right here a model. I could make the bottom of this a model. I can make the bottom of this all a model. The, the thing that you have to worry about is that you don't want people really walking too much on models. Uh, I mean, you can, but it's not really great for optimal optimization purposes. Um, you're going to be making these models like static and everything. You don't want them to move at all. Um, I could make that a model. There's a lot of things you can make a model. The reason why you would make this a model is to remove that brush count, to lower that brush count, so that your maps can be compiled properly and be playable within the game. So I've actually uh, created a tree, and this is just a collection of brushes, little solids here. And what we want to do is make this into a model using that proper thing. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to pull it out of the map, and we're going to create a new map. So I'm just pressing Control N, and we're going to paste it Control V. Now I got to find it. There it is. We're now going to create this into a um, an entity. So blah, blah blah. Now that we already have the proper thing installed, we're going to create this into the proper model. That proper FGD thing gives us this property that we can use. I'm going to apply that. We want to name this, well this is going to be a Minecraft model, so within the models folder we'll just call this uh, Minecraft whatever. And then <laughs> this is going to be um, brushes that we've created and tree top. Um, you can name this whatever. This is just how you want it to be organized within your models folder. And for ease, sake of ease, we're going to copy and paste that. Oh goodness, what have I done? Paste that. Oh come up! What am I doing? Just calm down. Just calm down. We got this. There. Okay. So we have the model name. Model name end up being tree tall, and the material path for it, so that it knows where to get the materials. The scale. I just want this to be 100% the size that it is. You can make it smaller if you want to for skyboxes. You can do whatever you want. It, it, it doesn't really matter, honestly. The surface property. This is important. What do you want the surface to be? If this is a TNT box, you probably want it to be um, wood. If this is a tree wood, but I'm going to choose grass because the purpose of this tree is not for them to, I mean, this uh, puts the model effect, so impact sounds and, um, like if they're walking on it. Uh, I want them to have, because they're not going to be walking on the tree bark, they'll be walking on the, on the leaves most likely because they jump on top of the tree. And so I want that to have that grassy sound. Now, if they shoot the tree itself, it might have that grassy impact. Oh, well, I don't really care. I'm just going to this is mostly just for what I'm using on the map, so I'm just going to put this grass. Fix match, don't have to touch that mass. Since I'm not going to, since I'm going to have this be a static model, I don't need to touch the mass of it. If I was making this a TNT block or something and I wanted it to be a model just for sake of ease, I could probably add it. Now, this is done in kilograms, remember that, so I don't know how many kilograms a TNT brick would weigh, but like you can try it out with 10 or 5 or whatever you want to do. I don't know. Um, this uh, is going to create a folder, and I don't really know what the QC or SMD files do. Um, you don't really have to deal with that. You can just delete it afterwards. I never really use it. And everything else you can kind of leave the same. We're going to press apply. Now, what we also need to do is that once we create this model, if we're making it solid, it needs to have some sort of hitbox so that players can jump on each one of these little things. Otherwise, it's just going to be one big square or it won't even be, it won't even have a hitbox at all. So to create the hitbox, we're going to copy the entire thing, paste it, and we need to apply a certain texture. We need to apply this texture called player clip. Apply. So the entire thing has that texture. Now we also need to make sure that this is not a proper model entity. We need to make this just a regular old funk brush. Leave it like that. 
Now we do want these two models to overlap exactly. So make sure when you copy and paste something, it might not be attached to the grid perfectly. So just go ahead and select the whole tree and move it around just a little bit. That way it realigns itself to the grid. And then we're going to put it right on top of that. Make sure you're both vertically and horizontally aligned. So it should be an exact casing like a glove. All right. So we are finished in the new source. So we can now save this map and uh, you can put it wherever. I'm just going to put it on my desktop as tree tall test. And so we're finished there. So we can go ahead and just minimize that. Now, now with this old source SDK, we need to actually create a mod. This is going to be really strange because this is going to use some tricks from a person named God UK. Yeah, discovered a little workaround um, with proper, uh, as it doesn't really work with the new sources to came. So we need to open up sources to came. Boop, boop, it'll open this up. We need to create a mod. We create half a two single player mod. Now, with this, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to delete my previous one that I had up. Yes, 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 yes. And as far as the directory, can choose whatever you want this has no whatever we're just gonna do i'm gonna do proper as i've done this so many times i'll do proper three anyway name it whatever you want as far as the mod uh proper three as well it doesn't matter uh, we can name this proper test blah blah, blah. It doesn't matter let it create this is creating an environment with which this proper exe can work uh, remember, we put it in that sources decay folder. This is just what needs to be done. Anyway, finish that. We don't need to open the readme file. Remember to choose this mod that you just created and open up the hammer editor. I think I opened up two of them. My bad. All right, once it's open, we need to go to tools, options. <clears throat> Within this one, we need to add uh, we need to add that proper FGD file. Remember, so we go to SDK. This is where we put in uh, the Steam Apps Common, then Source SDK, and then Bin, and then Source Seven, and then Bin again, and then Proper. This is where we placed it. Add that now. We want the models to be placed in our Gary's mod folder. So if we choose the game directory, I'm going to go browse application, uh, my applications, Steam apps, common, Gary's mod, and Gary's mod one more time. So it'd be Steam apps, common, Gary's mod, Gary's mod. Leave it right there. Now this doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. Everything else we can just leave as such. And we need to close it and reopen it. Reopen it. All right, so now we're going to open up the map that we created. Um, I'll include this map in, in the YouTube file. That's fine. You're going to notice that it's all these issues, these errors. We can't see the map. This is why we created it in the original, uh, not the original, but in the newer Sources DK hammer, whatever we did. Once we have this open, we are going to compile the map because it's already been created. Now, when you open up, when you press this button, you're probably going to see this. We need to go into expert mode. One of the few times you can call yourself an expert. And we need to create a new configuration. I'm going to click edit, new. I'm just going to name this. Let me just delete my other one. Remove. Yes, 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 yes. Remove. Yes, yes. New. I'm going to name it proper. Close. We want to select the proper configuration. It's going to be blank. To add a new one. The command, this is the program we're going to be running. Um, since we put that proper file in that folder, we're going to proper.exe. And the parameters, once again, this is coming from this guy. Thank you, thank you. We're going to put these parameters right here. I'll put these in the, in the YouTube thing. Um, 
that's a parameter. We are finished here. Make sure we have the check mark right there so that it actually runs this when we compile it. And press go. Now it's going to do all this little magic. It's finished. So now we have that model done. There we go. Okay, so now we're actually going to go back to our original hammer, see if we see that model. We have to reload it, because it has to reload all the models and everything. So we'll reopen that old our tree test thing that we did. We're going to create an entity. I'm going to move this over, so it put it side by side. And we are going to create this a prop detail. And we're going to browse the world model. And we should have had it under Minecraft brushes tree tall. Click apply, and there it is. That's an exact replica. Looks just the same, but one is a collection of brushes, and one is a model entirely. So, with this, hopefully, you can decrease the amount of um, the brush count, if you will. I mean, this one tree itself is. Um, This one tree itself is nine different brushes. So in essence, we made nine brushes into one model. And models don't even go against this um, brush count. It goes into the entity count. So if you have a map that has several hundred trees, imagine that you're taking the 900 brushes that those 100 trees could have been and shrinking it down to zero brushes and just a whole bunch of entities. So you can really allow yourself to have a larger maps um, with less brushes and be more optimized for players. That way they don't have FPS drops or slows the computer down. Um, there's lots of tricks you can do with this. Um, that Sky Island, that TTT Sky Island, for example, map, they did it by making the entire islands uh, models. If you actually look at the map that they have created, uh, I think I have it here. If you look at their Sky Island map that they had, which is by far one of the better maps I've seen made for Minecraft, um, the whole island that they have, uh, how can I show this more effectively? Uh, where's one of them? Just gotta find it. Well, these things right here. Yeah, these are the island models. I mean, you can't see it very well because I don't have the model itself extracted. But these huge things, these are prop statics. Um, these, I think when you use a prop static instead of a prop details, that prop statics, I don't know if you can collide into it. You, you probably can, I can't remember. You have to tinker around with that. But the whole bottom of the island was fake. It was just a model. It wasn't even... It wasn't even something you could walk on. And if you were to delete it, all they had actually as a brush in their map was just the little top surface area. But everything beneath it was a huge a huge model. If you look inside in the game, you'll see what I'm talking about, how the, the bottom part of each and every single island was just a model. And so it was very impressive. It, it really made their map look extraordinarily huge, but it allowed them to pull off that illusion because they had those models there. So that was how they made their map really awesome. Props to them. But anyway, that's how you use that proper, and I hope this guy will help you optimize your maps and make them as big as you possibly can. Good luck, guys. Take care.